Hello and welcome to 7 Days of Science. Coming up in the news this week... Starting off the news this week, a study published in the journal Nature meticulously analysed the effects of gravity on protons and antiprotons for comparative purposes. It's incredibly difficult to take sufficiently accurate measurements of both these particles, and great effort has been put into this experiment, which ran in four separate stages from the end of 2017 to mid-2019. The team behind this managed to make their measurements with a precision that hasn't been reached before, and their conclusions have somewhat challenged how the standard model of physics predicts matter and antimatter should behave under the conditions tested. The standard model is notoriously incomplete, and this seems to be one of those occasions where physics transcends and goes beyond the model. One of the biggest incomplete questions that the standard model raises is why there seems to be far more matter in the universe than antimatter, where theoretically there should be an equal amount of both. It's this kind of question that prompted this colossal experiment. If you'd like to learn more about it, check out our further reading sources which are, as always, in the description down below. And now over to Ben, who'd like to talk to you about our weather. Also in the paleontology news for this week has been a very interesting and useful paper reviewing our current understanding and evidence for non-feathery integument among theropod dinosaurs. The paper explains how although feathers were definitely widespread among maniraptoriform theropods, more basal theropods still likely possessed non-feathered skin structures. They found that among the most basal non-avirostrin theropods, only trackways preserve any evidence of integument, all showing a covering of tiny reticulate scales on the underside of the foot. Scaly skin is then known from avirostrins in ceratosaurs, allosauroids, compsognathids, and tyrannosauroids, with dermal ossifications, essentially bony structures grown in the skin, only known from the ceratosaur carnotaurus. Naked skin lacking in scales is known from sciuromimus, ornithomimosaurs, possibly tyrannosauroids, and in the wing membranes of scansoriopterygids. The paper remarks how scales are quite conservative among theropods compared to other dinosaurs, such as hadrosaurs, but that the limited remains we have of these structures doesn't allow for much further study. The researchers also found that polarised snake-like ventral scales were present on the tails of concavenator and juravenator, an interesting morphology. Additionally, not many theropods show good evidence for the co-occurrence of scales and feathers, but they do say that reticulate scales were probably retained on the hands and feet of many theropods with a lot of feathery integument. Feathers and filaments then appear to have mostly replaced widespread scales in Maniraptor and the theropods. It's a very interesting paper that gives us a much better understanding of theropod life appearance. It's a fascinating read. And of course, we also have the incredibly exciting news of the discovery of the biggest ichthyosaur fossil that has ever been found in the UK. Found in Rutland Water Nature Reserve in the East Midlands, it was spotted by worker Joe Davis in early 2021, who contacted paleontologists. Realising the significance of this find, a team of paleontologists including ichthyosaur specialist Dr Dean Lomax excavated the entire skeleton over the summer of 2021. This find is utterly remarkable, reaching 10 metres in length and being preserved in an astonishingly complete state. It's likely to be a species of ichthyosaur in the genus Temnodontosaurus, the biggest ichthyosaur found in the UK, and strangely was not found along a coastline like many ichthyosaurs in the UK usually are. The excavation has also just featured in the BBC series Digging for Britain. It's hugely exciting to think about the new information that will undoubtedly be revealed by the study of this amazing specimen, and I can't wait to see what Dr Lomax and the team are able to find out about it. Back to Doug in the studio. Thank you, Ben. Well, that's it for 7 Days of Science this week. I do hope you enjoyed, and we'll see you next week.